I don't want to get a tit for tat with uh, our partners who we work, work closely with, but if you look at the form, all of the information that's asked for is contained on there. Um, and I know that we reached out and asked a couple of times what's taking so long. They never told us there's incomplete or missing information. That's not what was uh, given to us. They said they were doing everything they could to move as quickly as they could. The back and forth is building as questions swirl over the timing of the Amber Alert that went out yesterday while the search for two girls for the search for those two girls in Tangibahoe Parish raged on. Lead investigator Scotty Hunter is here now to find out what took so long to actually get that alert out. Scotty. Well, as even though that Amber Alert did not go out for hours, we checked in on how the process played out here and how it stacks up against other Amber Alerts sent out all across the country. This man, Daniel Callahan, is locked up, accused of killing a woman and snatching her two daughters. That woman's body was found in her home in LaRanger around 8 Thursday morning. The local sheriff's office quickly sent emails to the media with an urgent plea for help in finding the little girls, but it was many hours later, 1228 p.m., before Louisiana State Police put out this Amber Alert, lighting up phones across the area and asking DOTD to put up the information on interstate signs. The alert was canceled hours later after Callahan was captured in Mississippi after allegedly killing the younger sister and dumping her body in the woods. When he was hunted down, Callahan was found with the older sister inside the mother's car. But what was the holdup in getting the Amber Alert out? Tangipo Sheriff Daniel Edwards says he first reached out to state police about the Amber Alert around 9 a.m. We had asked for that and we called several times inquiring as to why what was taking so long and the only thing we were being told is we're working on it we're working on it he says it was not until he called the head of the sheriff's association that the alert finally went out what the cause of the delay was i can't say it was something that was very frustrating for us and i'm sure it's very frustrating for the family in your opinion could it have gone out sooner or should it have gone out sooner i can't offer an opinion about that because i don't have all, i don't have all the information stacy pearson spent more than 20 years with louisiana state police most recently in charge of the Amber Alert system before she left to do consulting work. She says Amber Alerts are a critical tool used to find missing children, and while every second matters in getting it out, there's a lot more that goes into the decision. Along with the basic information like names, ages, height, weight, Sub, um, suspect description, vehicle description. You also need uh, appropriate photographs. Um, sometimes those photographs need to be cropped. Sometimes they need to be enhanced. Uh, when a suspect is identified by name, generally you need uh, an arrest warrant in place in order to share that information with the public. So all, the, all that information has to be in place. All those steps have to be completed before an activation can actually occur. Even after an alert is issued, she warns the outcome of a case like this ultimately falls on the person who took the children, and the timing of any alert system can be complicated and may even influence what that abductor decides to do. Most people have cell phones, so the abductor is getting the alert just like everyone else. So if we believe that the alert system has the ability to affect abductor decision making in a positive way, we also have to look on the flip side of that is, can the alert affect abductor decision making in a negative way? Pearson says it typically takes about three hours from the moment LSP is contacted about a missing child to issue an Amber Alert. According to this data from the Department of Justice, out of 154 Amber Alerts that were issued across the country in 2022, only 70 of them took three hours or less for the alert to be activated. 84 of those Amber Alerts took more than three hours to be issued, and 15 of those cases were not tracked. While she can't speak directly to what happened Thursday without all the facts, Pearson says it does seem to fall in line with the average time frame for Amber Alerts across the nation. 1228 is, uh, is when the Amber Alert was issued. You know, that seems to fall within what is, what is typical or what was typical last year. While it can be hard to deal with a tragic outcome, Pearson says it's only natural to look for somewhere to place blame, which can sometimes fall on systems like Amber Alerts. When a child dies, when it's a tragedy, it's natural for us as human beings, as parents, as just concerned citizens, to want to prevent that tragedy from happening again. When we have those feelings, it's natural to point fingers or try to place blame somewhere. It's a, it, it makes us feel better to, to find something to blame. 
Now, state police also added some clarity to all this, releasing a timeline of the Amber Alert process from Thursday. You can find that right now in the iTeam section of the 9 News app list. All right, Scotty Hunter, some good answers there for us. Thank you. We're also tracking some